Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome to another Fallout 4 challenge run. My last run with only shotguns was a fun romp, so today we're gonna take on something a little weirder while we find out if I can beat Fallout 4 survival difficulty as an assault tron. Before we get into the run, let's lay down some ground rules. I can only use assault tron weapons and armor. I must play the entire game on the survival difficulty. I can't use bugs or glitches on purpose to exploit the game. I can only use visual mods with the exception of the playable robots mod, and I cannot use console commands for anything but fixing bugs. With the rules of the run laid out, let's take a look at the challenge itself. After the Protectron run came out, you all asked for this run more than any other, and I'm excited to try it. I'm writing this script as I go, and all of this part has been written prior to beginning the run, so if you want to skip past my starting thoughts and get right into the gameplay, skip to the timecode on screen now. With them gone, let's dump some info. This run is weird to to analyze, but I think the best place to start is with the tools at our disposal. We're going to be playing as an Assaultron, which is a really strong enemy in Fallout 4. It's a fast, melee-focused bot with a head laser. It should be easier than the Protectron run in theory, but I'm really unsure about that since this will basically be a melee run with a twist. This has me a bit worried since in the melee run I did, I relied heavily on Sneak, and in this one, that won't be an option. I'm already familiar with the mod we're going to be using, which is made by Abba Loves You over on Nexus Mods, and I know that in combat I won't be able to sneak, and on top of that I'm going to be playing in third person for the entire run. The only time we're going to be going into first person is during specific tasks that require it. With that said, third person melee is a nightmare in Fallout 4, and I'm worried that I'll struggle to fight even basic enemies. I honestly have no idea what lies ahead of me in this run, so let's stop talking talking about it and just get into the action. Comment down below if you think I can beat this challenge. I think I can beat the game, but that this challenge will be deceptively difficult. We start the run in our pre-war bathroom as a human, which isn't very fitting considering we need to be an Assaultron for the challenge to work. So the first thing I do is open up the console command and enter the Ryle Zero command to turn off all control restrictions. I then enter help Pipboy4 to find the ID for a Pipboy, and after using play Equip item with the Pip Boy item ID, we now have a Pip Boy equipped. I then use the help command to find both the Assaultron form aid item and the Assaultron full armor piece. I then make sure to favorite both items so we can use the favorite hotkeys to use them, and then switch to the third person camera and use the Assaultron form aid item first, followed by the Assaultron full armor piece, and voila! I am now a naked Assaultron. Don't worry, we won't be naked for long, but for now it's time to go through Sanctuary like a totally normal human. Staring at the bridge all day like normal humans do. After a while, a man knocks on the door and I answer it, and it's the vault Tech sales representative and he wants to know my beautiful name and all about how special I am. I decide to go with a build focused around melee, with 10 in strength for more melee damage and the big leagues perk, 1 in perception because who needs to see, 1 in endurance for more HP, as well as perks like Toughness, Life Giver, Adamantium Skeleton, and Solar Powered, 3 in Charisma for the Lone Wanderer perk, 1 in Intelligence because I'm not smart, 2 in Agility for slightly more action points, and 1 in Luck because I broke a mirror. With our build finished up, it's time to collapse onto the couch and relax, but Sean starts crying so instead I go to Interface with the tiny fleshy one before the information box tells us that it's cloudy with a chance of total atomic annihilation. I then fall follow the procedure known as Run Like Hell until I reach the entrance to Vault 111, where we watch a pretty explosion and enter the vault. I then follow a scientist and get shoved into the world's best sleeping bag before waking up only to find the tiny fleshy one got stolen and the big fleshy one got terminated. I then wake up 60 years later and spend some quality time beating some overgrown roaches into a fine paste before using telekinesis to open the vault door and make my escape into the commonwealth wasteland. I then 
go save at a bed and reload the game, and when I do, we are invisible, so I go ahead and use the Assaultron form aid item and the full armor piece to fix that before going to the armor workbench and completing our getup. Oh, also, I use the console to change our character's gender. You may ask why I didn't start as Nora instead of Nate. Well, that's because the mod has issues if you start with Nora, apparently. And lastly, I use the survival options holotape to turn off hunger, thirst, and sleep requirements. The last thing I want to mention is I couldn't figure out how to get the head laser to work, and I spent about two hours trying things and reading the forums, trying to get it to work, and just couldn't. So, unless I figure that out, we're going to just do the challenge as a regular Assaultron without head laser. With all that out of the way, I speak to Codsworth and sass him about evil leprechauns. Or maybe evil leprechauns. Before running around and killing bloatflies with him. It's a bit awkward, but luckily the hitbox on my attack is massive, so maybe this won't be so bad. Oh, and what's this? I can use the laser all of a sudden? I'm really confused as to why it's working now, but I won't look a gift horse in the mouth. Either way, after cleaning up all the bloatflies and talking to Codsworth again, he tells me to head to Concord and see if the people there can help me. Before that, though, I head into our old house and sanctuary and grab the Your Special book, choosing to put a point into agility for more action points. I then go ahead and make my way towards Concord, meeting Dogmeat and claiming the Red Rocket workbench, as well as killing some Bud Bloogs along the way until I reach a strange scene where a man dressed like someone from the 1800s is fighting a bunch of Mad Max cosplayers from the balcony of a museum. I decide to help him, mostly because the Mad Max cosplayers were really mean to me, and things are going alright. I'm still struggling a bit with third person and melee, but I managed to kill off all the raiders, and luckily we're pretty tanky so I can afford to take some hits. Instead of entering the museum, I make my way to trash can Carla and try to seduce her Just looking for love, sweetheart. before trading and oh, the Assaultron laser needs fusion cells. Wait, how did I get fusion cells earlier? I'm honestly quite confused and I'm just going to attribute all of this wonkiness with the laser to the mod being buggy, but now that I have fusion cells, I blow away these mongrels with ease and those who survive my blast get beaten to a pulp. This run is feeling really fun already. Hey, quick editor's note from Future Willow. So throughout the run, you'll notice that the player model will sometimes be flashing with red light. That's what happens when the laser charges up and I don't fire it. I found it annoying and just wanted to inform you all. Moving on, I nap at a billboard and open the perk tree to take the big leagues and lone wanderer perks before heading over to the diner and using vets for the first time to turn a couple of drug dealers into a couple of dead dealers. After collecting my reward from Trudy, I head back to the Museum of Freedom and honestly, the early game portion of this run is is a joke. Even in the Protectron run, where I was much weaker, this area was easy, and I just cut through these bandits like they were nothing. When I go to talk to Preston, he spontaneously combusts, and I grab the Perception bobblehead before talking to him in Sturgis. After that, I head outside and brutally murder the raiders before using vets to fight the Deathclaw who, uh, starts flying? Well, either way, Vats kills one of the Deathclaw Wright brothers over here, and I clean up the rest of the bandits before heading back inside the museum and talking to the American Revolutionary and his drug-addled old lady. So, a really quick aside, at this point in the run, I decided to uninstall the Natural and Atmospheric Commonwealth mod. Normally, I'd use it for my own playthroughs, but it makes things so hard to see when it's raining or dark, and I know YouTube's compression algorithm made the museum look like trash before I even uploaded this video. So yeah, I recommend this mod for playthroughs, but for recording, it's horrible. With that out of the way, it's time to decide what I should do next, and you know what? I have read a lot of your comments complaining about how people only do the main storyline in these challenge videos, and I think this run is perfect for side questing, so I hop on over to YouTube and create a poll for my channel members to let them decide which side quests we're going to be doing. If you want to be part of choices like this, check out the join button down below, and while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. One shameless shill later, and here we are at the USS Constitution. The historical ship, also known as Old Ironsides in the real world, is a museum ship much akin to the USS Alabama and New Jersey. It's one of the six original frigates commissioned for the US Navy, and it's quite 
quite unique compared to the other two museum ships in the fact that it's the world's oldest ship still afloat and has done tours of many docks throughout America multiple times, compared to most museum ships which end up permanently docked. One history lesson later, and I think it's time to talk about the ship as it stands in Fallout 4. In the game, it sits atop a pre-war financial institution and has rocket engines attached to its sides to allow it to fly. As it sits right now, it is immobile, and when we approach, a Mr. Handy scans us and recognizes us as a lawyer from our pre-war life. He then proceeds to conscript us into the US Army and tells us to report to the captain. On the way up through the building, which is serving as a dock, I realize I have two perk points and use them to take the toughness and life giver perks before going up to try and speak with the captain, but can't because a raider is shooting at the robots. After spending a minute or two missing lasers, I finally turn the raider into an ash pile and go up to Captain Ironsides who speaks as if he's from the 1800s. He says, Look around you. In these times of great unrest, is it not prudent to adopt the manner of a more civilized time? when asked about it, and you know what? I can get behind this idea. So I agree to help him repair the ship's systems so it can fly off again and fight the communists. After that, the ship is attacked by a bunch of scavengers and I get to fire the cannons, which is so cool. I then start using my face laser and uh, shit. I accidentally hit one of the robots on the ship and end up getting stun locked by Ironsides who kills me. Whoops. Either way, I go through all of that again, this time not not risking using my face laser and letting my robot compatriots deal with the scavengers. Afterwards, I speak with the bosun who needs me to go around and replace power cables because he lacks arms. I run around doing just that before returning to him where he congratulates us on a job well done and tells us of another problem. The ship's power relay coils aren't really working properly, so we need to source some new ones, and before I head out to do that, I decide to find the navigator who for some reason is in the damned Weatherby Savings and Loan, and he asks me to retrieve the ship's guidance chip which was stolen by the scavengers. I happily head out to the scavengers forward camp and ask for it, but they say no, and that I'm lucky they aren't shooting me. Unfortunately for them, I don't take kindly to the threats, so I remove many limbs from many scavenger bodies, and afterwards I find the chip and make my way to Bunker Hill to buy the power relay coils. Upon returning to this glorious ship, I install the guidance chip and the navigator tells me to find a Poseidon energy thingamajig, but before that I head into the ship and replace the power relay coils and get another round of huzzas from the bosun and he also seems to feel bad about not having clapping appendages to applaud me. What a nice fella. Either way, I head off to the nearby Poseidon energy plant and after killing a few rad roaches including a glowing one and some bloat flies, I find a thingamajig and head outside only to be assaulted by my Alert hunters. Oh boy, I was worried about them, but vats and a few well-placed attacks bring them down and I make my return to the pride of the US Navy's fleet. Once there, I install the thingamajig onto the satellite dish and get a reward from the navigator before speaking to Ironsides. He tells me to head off to the Corvega assembly plant to get a turbo pump bearing, so I head off to do just that. I enter Corvega through a drainage pipe and proceed to waltz my way through the facility, killing ghouls, raiders, and turrets alike. They are really pushovers if I'm honest, and no one survives more than a single hit, and I have a lot of fun tearing arms, heads, and legs from their bodies. I thought parts of the shotgun run felt a lot like a Doom playthrough, but this is just so much more fun, and I'm really getting the hang of third person melee. I do end up dying once because I lock myself into the laser animation to kill a turret when a raider throws a grenade at me and it blows up along with some explosive canisters nearby. I fall apart like a Lego person, which which you all seemed to really enjoy in the Protectron run. And after another fun-filled 10 minutes, I grab the turbo pump bearing and make my way out of Corvega through the drainage pipe before returning to the Constitution to install it. I then speak with Ironsides, who applauds me before scavengers attack again. I use the cannons a couple of times, but then decide to give you all this cool shot of the action while Ironsides and his crew clean up the scavengers, and then I speak with him and he gives me the broadside, a unique weapon, 
and calls upon me one last time to provide assistance. I happily agree and make my way over to the circuit breaker and turn it on, allowing the Constitution to take flight once more. After watching this beautiful display end in disaster as the Constitution gets lodged into another financial institution, I can rest peacefully knowing I did my duty to this great nation's navy. With that out of the way, I figure we should probably progress the story a bit, so I head off to Park Street Station, and when I get there, I notice an odd-looking swan in a pond near the entrance. I decide to shoot a laser at it for fun, and oh god, it's a super mutant behemoth. Well, after soiling myself when it hits me, I pop into vats and kill it. Looting the behemoth named Swan, I find the Furious Power Fist, a pretty cool weapon that maybe we'll see in a future run. I then use three banked perk points I have to get the second ranks of the Big Leagues and Life Giver perks along with the first rank of the Solar Powered perk. I then proceed to change my pants and enter the station to find a bunch of gangsters that don't like Assaultrons. I decide such a transgression requires immediate termination, so I go through the subway station ripping the Triggermen apart. The combat is starting to get a little bit more rough, I'm having to pop a ton of healing supplies to stay up in these fights and end up running out before even reaching Vault 114, which makes me quite worried. It also causes the fights with the Triggermen to become really tense as almost all the damage they do is permanent. I start relying on vats quite a bit more throughout this dungeon as it's the easiest way to both guarantee a hit and lower the damage taken. Despite these struggles though, I make my way all the way through Vault 114 and use my face laser to melt Dino, the anxious triggerman, before saving the cutest little detective ever. I level up when saving Nick Valentine and take the second rank of the toughness perk before going through the vault killing all the mean triggermen that are trying to kill my new detective friend. Together, we get back to the entrance of the vault, and I'm not really much of a talker, so I kick off the brawl by using my face laser to hurt Skinny and kill one of his men before tearing my way through them. Afterwards, I exit the subway with Nick and talk to him. He tells me to meet him in his office in Diamond City, so I set off towards the Great Green Jewel of the Commonwealth and come across some super mutants and... Oh no. No, 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 no. That's a suicider. And for some reason, I... I forgot that my head laser existed until after he had died, but that made me so anxious. I then help a wandering arms dealer kill the remaining super mutants, including a legendary, before trading with her. I then enter Diamond City and head over to Nick's detective agency where I tell him all about my fleshy one getting terminated and my tiny fleshy one being absconded with. He tells me to follow him, and I do until we reach an old abandoned house, and we can't enter, so Nick tells me to go get the keys from the mayor's office. Then I fail three different speech checks to get the damned keys to the house, and we just pick the law. I don't have any bobby pins. Huh, that's a new one. I usually always have those. Well, I go and buy some off the Mr. Handy in the market, and then come back up the elevator to the mayor's office to pick the lock on the secretary's desk to get the key to Kellogg's house, and man, that was a lot of words to not say very much. Oh, also, Kellogg, he's the mercenary we think kidnapped my kid and killed my wife. Entering his house, I find a button that leads to a secret man cave with booze and cigars. I then let dog meat sniff one of the cigars before leveling up and taking the rooted perk. Afterwards, I head off to Fort Hagen by myself, and when I arrive, I use my face laser to kill a couple of turrets before entering the fort and activating a Protectron. It does alright killing a couple of the synths, but ends up dying, so now I run around the fort killing all the turrets and synths with little issue, and the combat in this section isn't necessarily easy, but by dictating the pace of each little engagement, I'm able to get through the fort without taking too much damage or dying. I do have to pop some healing supplies occasionally, but eventually, I I reach the room with Kellogg and let my face laser rip into him and uh it only takes about half of his HP. I then try to run away from him and his sense, but apparently I forgot how my legs work because I just keep running into things and end up dying. On my next attempt, I opt for using vats instead of my face laser and Kellogg goes down pretty quickly. Then we have to deal with the synths, which are uh, fighting me with their fists. I'm not sure why they would do that since, you know, 
They have guns, but okay, they die pretty quickly and I scoop some gray matter into my pockets before heading outside and admiring the Pridwin's arrival. And with that, I'm feeling the side quest itch again, so I head over to Good Neighbor and assert dominance by turning a thug into a pile of ash before taking my opportunity to have a photo op with the most beloved Assaultron in the Commonwealth. After meeting up with my best friend Cleo, I head into the third rail here in Good Neighbor and find a ghoul in combat armor who offers me a job to work for him. I inform him that danger is what I live for. I live for danger. Where do I sign up? And he tells me to head over to the Cabot House to meet his boss before I start working for him. When I reach Cabot House, I find a really friendly sentry bot outside before getting yelled at by an intercom. After explaining that Edward sent me, I find out it's Edward who is on the other side of the intercom, and that seems weird. Why didn't he recognize the bright pink Assaultron he was speaking to no less than 20 minutes earlier? Either way, I enter the house to find it's a perfectly preserved pre war house on the inside, which is quite amazing. I then watch a man create a small explosion before introducing himself as Jack Cabot. He then gets excited talking about aliens and I'm really interested, but he gets interrupted by Edward who tells me to go find a missing shipment up north near one of Jack's facilities. I head out of the house and make my way up to the Parsons State Insane Asylum, which is a facility run by Jack, and speak to Maria who tells me that the raiders nearby stole the shipment and that they're still held up in a creamery just north of the asylum. I go there and clean up the raiders pretty easily before finding a mysterious serum on them. I then make my way back to the Cabot house and find Jack and his mother Wilhelmina, I think that's right, arguing, which makes the conversation with Edward awkward. After getting my reward and delivering the last of the serum to him, he says we should meet the mother and after listening to some more arguing between the two, Edward tells me to go track down Imogene. Jack's sister, and to start at the third rail. So I head over to the third rail and speak with the barkeep, Mr. Handy, who has a great personality. I ask him about Imogene, and he tells me Magnolia should know what's going on with her, and stops Magnolia mid-song to tell her to talk to me. After some light flirting back and forth, she tells me Imogene ran off with a preacher, and the club's bouncer gives me a pamphlet to let me know where he is. I head off to this amphitheater nearby and find the preacher, who obviously is going to try and convert me to his religion. When I say no and ask for Imogene, he refuses to let me see her, and I get angry with him, so he turns hostile with all his followers, so I then have to use vats, lasers, and some good old-fashioned claws to end a religion. One of them tries to run away, but you know how survivors are, always plotting revenge and holding grudges, so I chase him down and end him. I then find Imogene, and she says she'll come back home, and I return to the Cabot house to find Jack on the radio, unable to get a clear signal until eventually Edward comes on the radio and it turns out the asylum is under attack. I tell Jack that Imogene is coming home and he tells me to come with him to the asylum to help deal with the raiders and that he'll explain what's going on along the way. I'll play what he says now, but before I do I want to rant about something annoying in games. Why the hell do games have us follow an NPC and then give said NPC a movement speed that is faster than our walking animation, but slower than our run. It is so awkward to have this stop and go running while trying to listen to what they have to say, especially in a game like this where there are three different movement speeds for the player. It's such an annoying thing that games do way too often. All right, my rant is done. Here's what Cabot says. You should know what we're going to be dealing with. My father is confined in Parson. For his own safety and everyone else's, he became dangerously unstable after handling an ancient artifact he found in Arabia. I spent my life trying to figure out how to cure him. It's the artifact that's made Lorenzo so dangerous. I'm sure his psychosis would be cured if it could be removed. But so far, all my attempts have failed. It's fused too tightly with his nervous system. You may have guessed by now that my family and I have lived for a very long time thanks to the serum derived from my father's blood. I discovered the alterations to his blood in some of my earliest attempts to remove the artifact. I eventually isolated the anomalous compounds which led to the serum treatment we still use. I'm well aware of the apparent conflict of interest in my father being the source of the treatment that is prolonging my own life. 
But I assure you that if I had the chance, I would gladly give it all up to have my father back, even for a short time. Okay, so after that, we have some combat encounters on the way to Parsons, and it's honestly some rough engagements. Of course, some of them are pushovers, like the single bloatfly that attacked us, but we also had things like a Mr. Gutsy that I had to take out with my laser, nearly killing Jack, but those are small details compared to the group of super mutants that ambushed us, and after all that, I have to fight another Mr. Gutsy and my first Assaultron of the run. The Assaultron had me worried, but in the end, I got the better of it, and and uh, Jack takes the longest and weirdest path to the asylum. We even passed the corpse of a Deathclaw I killed earlier the first time coming out here that I didn't mention because Deathclaws are kind of easy for me to kill with the Assaultron animations. Either way, we eventually reach the asylum and it's crawling with raiders. They aren't even really that hard to kill, I just claw and laser my way through them with little to no issue. I'm starting to get worried that nothing in this run will be able to rival us in combat, but I keep pressing on until we find Edward, who seems to be dying next to an elevator. After talking to him for a bit, with a funny line of dialogue, Are you sure you can't get up? I could really use your help. Yeah, Jack. I'm pretty damn sure. I make my way through the abandoned section of the asylum with Jack, killing a bunch of raiders along the way. Eventually, though, we reach the room where they're keeping Jack's father, Lorenzo, and after going through a bunch of doors and killing some raiders, I turn on the generators and Lorenzo dies to a lethal dose of Zeta radiation. I then exit and talk with Jack to get my reward, and with that, I have completed the Cabot House side quest and I think it's time for more story, so I head over to Diamond City to talk with Nick and Oh look, Piper is here. After a long conversation, it's decided that going to Good Neighbor and meeting a Dr. Amari is the best choice. Before heading out, I realize I have four perk points, so I spend them on Adamantium Skeleton Rank 1 and 2, as well as getting two points in agility for more AP. I then head to Good Neighbor and meet Nick inside the memory den before Dr. Amari shoves Kellogg's cybernetic brain piece into Nick's head, only to find out that it's encrypted. So I have to hop into a memory lounger and use my Assaultron CP to decrypt it. This is quite possibly one of the very few times I will ever look forward to the Kellogg brain sequence because due to the mod we're using being incredibly buggy, we are invisible. So here's a little montage of an Assaultron running through Kellogg's brain where we use his memories to find out that the Institute is using teleportation and that's why nobody has found them. Also, I'd like to ask you to consider going down into the comments below and leaving a suggestion for another challenge run. While you're down there, if you could consider consider liking the video, it helps a lot with the algorithm, and if you're enjoying the content I make, consider subscribing to keep up to date on all my videos. Now that the montage is over, we exit the memory lounger and talk to Dr. Amari again, and it's decided we need to go track down the rogue institute scientist Kellogg was ordered to hunt down, and he's hiding in the glowing sea. So after a quick conversation with Kellogg through Nick's body, we exit the memory den and make our way to the edge of the glowing sea, where we begin our voyage to Vine Virgil. The trip through the Glowing Sea really isn't difficult, as most everything dies to a single hit. We kill a Deathclaw and a bunch of annoying rad scorpions. I always hate them popping out of the ground, it scares me. And also end up killing a bunch of bugs, including a Budbloog that was temporarily unkillable, which had me really worried. Either way, we reach his cave and a legendary Deathclaw that drops a relentless double barrel shotgun. I would have killed for this in my last run, and it it stunlocks me so bad that I sit here staring at it for a while. Either way, I enter the cave and skip through Virgil's dialogue before heading off to Green Tech's genetics to hunt down a courser. And this was a really fun dungeon, much like the last challenge. So you know what? In honor of the last challenge, let's have another murder montage. Editor's note, while the montage plays, I'd like to bring up something I noticed later in this run. For some reason, a lot of enemies started to unequip their weapons and try and fight me unarmed. And this happens throughout the run, but this is the first time you'll see it happening a lot. I have no clue why, or even if it is a bug, but I figured I'd let you know.
Afterwards, I head to the Old North Church and get the Courser chip decoded by everyone's favorite crackhead of the railroad, Tinker Tom. I then head off to Sanctuary to speak with Preston, as I need a faction to build the signal interceptor with, and I figure that the Minutemen would be the fastest, so after collecting the reward for the Wind Freedom Calls quest, I get the quest to go help Tin Pines Bluff. I head over to the bluff, and the settlers ask me to deal with the raiders over at Walden Pond, so I head off to the Walden Pond and quickly ruin these raiders' whole career with a simple jab from my claws. After telling the settlers that the raiders are gone, I return to Preston and he makes me the general of the Minutemen. Quite snazzy if I do say so myself. I then spend a few minutes speaking with Sturgis and building the signal interceptor before teleporting into the Institute. After riding a couple of elevators while Father monologues over the intercom, I find young Sean and laugh so hard at the bug that occurs when I speak to him. I don't know why, but... <laughs> It's hilarious to me to think of this child sitting here, seeing a robot come in and then suddenly morph into an unimaginable horror before morphing back while yelling about being his mom. This would be an absolute goldmine for a therapist. Either way, I then speak with Father and go through the rigmarole of meeting all the Institute Division leaders, which honestly is a quest I kind of hate. I know it's here to let players get a feel of the Institute, but it's so boring. It's almost as bad as the conversations with Virgil because every one of them hangs on just a little bit too long. Either way, I return to Father who asks me to hunt down a rogue synth who is leading a raider gang from Libertalia. I agree and head off to the floating bastion of raiderdom to meet up with a courser who will be assisting me. On my first attempt, I try to be fancy and just go through the water to get right to the main structure immediately but end up dying to a fat man wielding psychopath who decides to fire at point blank taking out me and himself. On my second attempt, I try sniping the fat man raider with my head laser, but I can never get the right angle and always end up missing. So I revert to my original plan and just make my way to the main structure, and on the way up, I spam vats on every enemy and it works out. The only mini nuke launched only clips me while I'm in vats, so I don't really take any damage, and I manage to clear out the raiders in the main structure and head up to the roof to use the factory reset code on the raider leader, and then I make a daring escape jumping off the ship and teleporting back into the institute where I speak with father who gives me a free apartment that I go check out. When I return to father he tells me of the railroad holding multiple cents at Bunker Hill and how he wants me to reclaim them. I tell him consider it done and head off to Bunker Hill where I meet a courser and this is where I'm expecting the run to get really hard. The Brotherhood and their power armor are really tough customers. They should be pretty difficult to kill and they use use lasers which should hurt me quite a bit. Going into the battle, I was taking things slowly and trying to use cover, but it ended up being the wrong call as I was taking a lot of damage while dealing very little. Eventually, I start taking a more aggressive stance where I rush down a group of Brotherhood and then take cover, and I end up taking a lot of damage while charging them down, but by using most of the healing supplies I've been banking throughout the run, I managed to make my way through the Brotherhood members and railroad agents alike. I even end up terminating two Brotherhood Knights in power armor with Gatling lasers, which was quite fun. Overall, the fight was tense and required some finesse, but I managed to deal with all these enemies outside before making my way into the basement of Bunker Hill, where I sit there and let the Railroad and Brotherhood members fight it out and kill each other. Eventually, though, I do jump in to deal some final blows on them, and then slowly give all four cents their recall codes before heading out of Bunker Hill to meet with Sean on the CIT Ruins roof. I speed through through his dialogue and meet him again in the Institute, where I attend a board meeting and get appointed as father's successor, making me the future director of the Institute. I then speak with Allie, and she tells me that her and I are going to mass fusion to get a gizmo that we can use to get the Institute's reactor running. I head up to the relay room and get a warning that the angry metal men will be very angry if I go to mass fusion with Allie, but decide it's worth it and teleport to the roof of the building and start fighting my way 
way through the Brotherhood members there. It's rough, and I nearly run out of stim packs, which has me worried about the reactor room with its sentry bot and assaultrons, and the worst part of this entire section was the elevator ride where I had no good way of dealing damage to the Brotherhood members attacking me on the way down. When the elevator does eventually stop, I get quite lucky as the bug causing enemies to try and fight me unarmed happens again, and half the Brotherhood members here are trying to punch me instead of blowing me away with lasers. We eventually reach the reactor room, and I grab the gizmo, and on the way out use vats to kill off the sentry bot and assault trons with little issue before making my escape. I then return to the institute and head over to advanced systems to give Allie the gizmo before talking to father who sends me off to help an institute team near the green top nursery, so I head out there and fight through some gunners, including a legendary gunner that drops a... explosive double barrel shotgun. I swear this game is taunting me. Either way, I then go talk through a door to the only man who knows our true identity. Are you a robot? And then return to the institute where I talk with father again before giving a speech to a microphone and heading to Diamond City to fix their radio because apparently everyone in this universe is inept. I then teleport back into the institute to power up the reactor and on the way out get stuck because this institute scientist won't move. This frustrates me so much that I kill him in anger before realizing I hadn't saved in a while. Well, I go through the Diamond City radio repair and get the reactor turned on again before going to the director's meeting. And after talking with all of the other leaders of the Institute for a bit, I go to check on Sean and he tells me to go kill the railroad. I say okay and then head out to the railroad HQ where I kick things off with an awesome VAT sequence and continue to use VATs over and over again to kill all of the railroad leaders inside the HQ. With the railroad taken care of, it's time to move on to the last quest of the game, it's time to take on the Brotherhood. I return to the Institute and report my success before being told to go to the relay room to be teleported into the Boston airport where I'll need to kill three generators and upload a virus into Liberty Prime. I head up to the room, get teleported, and start slogging my way through the Brotherhood members left and right. I stocked up on healing supplies before coming because I expect the fighting to be really difficult. Before we take on the last mission, I'd like to give a bit of a shout out to a couple of Discord servers servers, the first being Friends by Night, as it's an awesome place filled with cool people. If you all want to talk to me or meet some fun people to play pretty much any game you can think of with, go check out the link in the description. Also, I run my own Discord server, but it's a bit more geared towards my other YouTube channel, so if you still want to talk to me or get notified about my content consistently, that's the place to go. Alright, back to the run. So the key to this mission is always getting the generators down quickly. The synth reinforcements can do a ton of heavy lifting, so I work my way around the outskirts of the airport until I enter the building itself. Things are going well, and I even manage to kill the first generator, but right after I do so, a suit of power armor blows up and kills me. On my second attempt, I decide to use my face laser to destroy the first generator before rushing down the knights guarding an elevator to the second generator and destroying it as well. I then rush in and kill the third generator only to barely escape death by a thousand lasers, and then I head out and start protecting the uploading the virus to Liberty Prime. This was tense as there was constant Brotherhood members coming up the stairs and lasers flying everywhere, and we even almost died to Maxon's Gatling laser because he was on the roof of the airport for some reason. But in the end, the virus gets uploaded and I get teleported out of the airport with a headless courser? Huh. Well, we watch the Pridwin fall into a ball of flames, and then I head back to the Institute and speak with Sean while answering the question, can I beat Fallout 4 as an Assaultron? Yes, yes I can. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting a new challenge suggestion down below. I also want to give a special thanks to my Patreons and channel members as their support has been tremendous. If you like this video, you are bound to like my Fallout 4 challenge run as a Protectron. You all are so beautiful, and this is Willow, signing off.